You're probably wondering how I got myself into this situation. Well, that's a long story. Alright, this run is a doozy, so let's get right into it. The first room wasn't so bad. Friendlies are genuinely helpful in many ways. First, they let me mow down all these guys because they're distracted. Then, I let them go in first and just clear out this hallway. I actually get through this hallway on my first try, which is a great sign for my tactical approach I have so far. I get into the first pod hangar room and come face to face with the greatest enemy of this challenge. The Halo 2 Checkpoint System. We'll get into it more when it's relevant, but for now I'll just say I know exactly how to trigger basically every checkpoint in this game now. At the start though, I was naive. Ten minutes of instant death was my punishment before I got back to the hangar room again. I got a checkpoint though. I was so pumped that I wanted to see how stupid doing something like jumping right at them was. That's when I learn a key thing about the Sniper Jackals in this game. I am the demon. I can scare them. You may think this is a mistake like the beginning of my All Hunters run. Watch it here, like, and subscribe, click the buttons. But this is actually intended behavior. All of these Jackals only have beam rifles, but Sniper Jackals have an inherent backup weapon for when they go into their retreat status. This isn't my fault, it's in the game, and I sure as hell am going to abuse it as much as I can. I will say, it doesn't by any stretch make the challenge easy. If anything, it makes it possible. You'll see. The hangar rooms weren't too bad with my marine friends. Sniper Alley number 2 of 5000 did take me a good 40 minutes of memorizing locations and behaviors. I'd get used to simple hallways like that, though. But not much else was worth mentioning compared to later in the run, so let's move on to the next level. Outskirts took me 15 minutes. You can jump on top of the roofs to skip the first half, and the second half is a vehicle section. That wasn't too tough, as you might expect. So, as I show some footage, let's clear up some things about the run. Every enemy is changed into a sniper jackal and is hostile to the player. All allies are unchanged. But one key change is that no matter what, the sniper jackals are on the same team. So in scenarios that usually have two enemy factions fighting each other, instead, they're all just gonna be shooting me. I also put skulls on that make them shoot faster and more often, and make them more aware of me because I hate myself, I guess. I also put on a skull that doubles enemies' health, but that won't do anything because I just headshot everything, right? Anyway, <laughs> oh god, on to the next level. Honestly, to keep the pace of the video up, just trust that it beat Metropolis 2. It's a vehicle-heavy level, this challenge is really easy. The next two levels took me 12 hours to beat, combined. So one fun thing I didn't learn until this level was that enemies that are normally higher rank still are. See, some of these guys have shields. Neat! After door peeking the entryway, I come to the first what I call advanced sniper alley of the run. So what do I mean by that? Well, there are a lot of areas like this that are just long, open, hallway-like zones with differing levels of cover, where as you inch forward, more waves come and come. So you can't just hang back, you need to make progress forward to spawn the new guys. And usually, these sections, I mean, they're just a bunch of grunts, normal jackals, and maybe some buggers. So you only need a checkpoint at the end, right? But now, it's a multi-wave sniper duel where any mistake sends me back. These were the worst sections in the game, and I promise that even the easy ones took me half an hour minimum. Every inch of progress is earned in this run. Speaking of that, this room took an hour. It wasn't all bad though, because I had a couple of good T-pose moments. <laughs> Now, it's time for a certified Halo 2 checkpoint moment. Sometimes, the game will give you checkpoints just surrounded by enemies because you were cloaked. 
So I got a checkpoint behind this pillar, which was barely safe enough to keep myself alive until the next camo to run up to the button to open the hangar door. That didn't work, though, because the camo on Legendary is just basically as long as a blink. I just hold my ground behind this pillar until it's clear. Now, I want to dispel a possible misunderstanding here. I am not smart. To prove this, I'll tell you something. I accidentally made the friendly phantom in this room an enemy to me. I thought this was stopping the door from opening, so I spent a while trying to somehow kill the driver of the phantom, uh, just so I didn't have to reset the level and fix it. Then I got killed, and noticed these fuckers spawning up where the sentinels spawn. They don't jump down because they're snipers. I mean, they love the high ground. This isn't the last time it's gonna happen, either. Basically, every time the sentinels spawn, they're spawning in holes that I can barely see. Anyway, after playing whack-a-mole with them, the door opens. The rest of the level isn't unimportant per se, because it did take a few hours off my lifespan, but dying in hallways over and over isn't interesting content, so let's just keep going. Welcome to the longest level in this challenge. The Flood posed a particularly tough challenge in this game. <laughs> oh god, sorry. <laughs> I accidentally turned this hologram into a jackal and it made me giggle. Anyway, as I was saying, you may be curious why the Flood would be particularly hard, because, I mean, all the enemies are just sniper jackals. But here's the thing. Think of everywhere the Flood spawns. They spawn in the ceiling. They spawn behind you. They spawn infinitely a couple of times, even. Pair this with Halo 2's atmospheric fog that basically only lets you see their eyes at some points, and you now understand why the Flood sections of this challenge are HELL. The first room took some exploring to find angles to kill all of them in the ceiling without dying. The elevator ride was something that I was dreading, but a lot of them spawn in weird little crevices that the snipers don't want to leave, uh, they spawn too far in the air and just die, or they just spawn in the wall. Anyway, it was easy. This room fucking wasn't, though. Okay. This room was the first of a few real roadblocks of this run. Checkpoints are scarce in this encounter. I believe you only get one in the middle of the fight, when the music ramps up and the snipers start spawning above you. Because of the sparse checkpoints, every near successful attempt was upwards of 5 to 10 minutes, without any mistakes. I was hiding in corners in the dark, afraid to be seen because I will die instantly. With the atmosphere, and the music, and the real punishment for failure, I can assure you I've never been more genuinely scared on a primal level from a video game than the climaxes of this encounter. I was stuck here for a long time, but eventually, that door opened, and I made my way to the next major roadblock of the run. Ten minutes of door peeking gets me in and on my way up the tower here. Making my way up was not easy, the high ground isn't a joke, the sniper AI knows how to use it to kill you. Maybe half an hour of attempts and I am up onto the elevator. Now for the real kicker. Think of what will happen at the top of this elevator when I get to the cable room. I'll give you a few seconds. Did you guess you'll die immediately to the 12 snipers all looking at you? If you did, you're right! I'll now tell you the actual, real, worst part of this challenge. Halo 2 has a checkpoint mechanic where if you die multiple times quickly after spawning, it will respawn you one checkpoint further back to prevent softlocks. I'm not softlocked though, but the game doesn't know that. So not only do I need to not die when going up an elevator with no cover into the middle of a dozen snipers, but if I die too quickly, I will go back to the previous checkpoint, which took me 30 minutes to get. Now you know why this level took me longer than... <laughs> grave mind. Anyway. I won't linger on the fact that I also accidentally turned my allies into enemies at the bottom here, so I had no help. The tiny amount of time Camo gives me is enough to get to this little pillar and defend it. For the first and not last time, I actually need to use the carbine to kill these guys quick enough, which is fun, until the RNG of carbine aim kills you. 
Once I get a checkpoint in this room, I'm able to extremely carefully pick off the last few and start punching the cables. A few more guys spawn, but I get them relatively easily and fly to the boss fight to clear out this room again. Not too bad of an end to a very tough level. Now, Delta Halo does have a skip to bypass parts of the level, but it's by no means trivial. Basically nothing is in this challenge. Try and do this skip while all of the guys in this temple are shooting at you. You need to clear out some of the jackals before attempting the jump, but after slogging through that we can skip to this building. Getting down off the cliff was actually the toughest part here. I clear out this building with no problems and extend the bridge. Now for the second half of the skip we need to clear out this area, after that we bring the ghost up here and do a little maneuvering. This move here to load the area is a little tough, but I get it. I like that we skip both areas in the game that are normally the sniper alleys. Anyway, we crash down here to the end of the level, and end the level relatively easily again. Alright, we all know what we want to see on this level. How long did the regret boss fight take? I'll get to it shortly, but I quickly want to point out the only room I was able to successfully stealth as chief in the entire run. Nice. Okay, the boss fight. For those of you who don't know, which included me beforeing this run, the regret fight has infinitely respawning enemies. I tried to kill his guards for a good 10 minutes before I caught on. I thought it wouldn't be too bad because I could get lucky just punching him a few times and just get him down that way. Now I think it would be a good time to tell you a dirty secret I've been hiding. This is my first time playing Halo 2 on Legendary. My memory was working off my most recent heroic run a few years ago, not a Legendary run that doubles his health by the way. So I spent two hours trying to get lucky before I get one attempt where I bored him six times and he still doesn't die. My hands were shaking so hard after that attempt that I had to take a break. I googled some stuff about the spawns and possible other strategies and came up with this plan. I would scare all of the jackals and not kill them. This makes them have a plasma pistol instead of a sniper. They still shoot it faster than normal, so five of them will still melt you like the sun, but it's not instant death. We take what we can get. I also learned that if you throw a grenade at the exact time that you board him, the grenade will get stuck inside of him and deal extra damage. These two strategies combined turn the fight from a possible week-long grind to just a few hours. This is the hardest boss fight I have ever done in a video game, and if you can't tell, I love a good challenge. I could talk for an hour about the small minutia about the spawning patterns and AI behavior I learned. This was not luck. The rest of the run can genuinely just be boiled down to peek them and don't get shot. This was different. And it was so much goddamn fun. I've never felt that sweet, sweet gamer catharsis more than when I saw his death animation play. If you think you can solo lasso this mod, I promise you, this level will break you. I genuinely think it is an impossibility. Sacred Icon took me six hours to beat, so in order to show my appreciation for everyone's favorite level, here are my top five moments from Sacred Icon in Halo 2. Number five. Number four. Number three. Number two. Number one. <laughs> okay, okay. There are two things I want to point out in this level. One is these guys find a ricochet angle to kill me before I could see them. That's terrifying. The second is that this hallway took me four hours on its own. The flood spawning issues are everywhere, and there are these choke points with literally no cover at all. This was the most methodical I had to get in the entire run, memorizing an exact series of steps to kill them all. In order to help with this, I actually abused that checkpoint mechanic from earlier. I purposefully would die quickly to revert back further, 
and then I would try and delay the one checkpoint you get at the beginning as far into the room as I could get. I ended up killing like five or six or so before I got a checkpoint, it's the best I could do, but it helped a lot. I thought it was a strategy worth mentioning, but anyway, on to the next level. Finally, I get a breather with Quarantine Zone. This level is very vehicle-centric, so there wasn't anything too difficult. A lot of people know about this strategy to skip the long gondola ride, so I do that and finish off this level without much fuss. Alright, here it is. Grave Mind. The hardest level in Halo 2. This opening room is notorious. Thankfully, the sniper closest to me gets scared. The rest don't shoot me immediately, and let me hide in this corner and take them all out. For the first time in the run, ammo is actually a real concern. After killing all of these guys, Double I need kill. to run over to grab a fresh sniper. I do that after a few attempts and take out the next wave. My issue now is that I just don't survive when this elevator comes up. I physically can't kill these three guys in time. So, I die quickly to revert back to the previous checkpoint, and this time, kill the wave on the other side of the room near the door. Now, I run into more ammo issues, but I manage to take out everything and get through. While again, not trivial at all, I make it through to the jail section. Ooh boy! I throw myself down this elevator long enough to make me genuinely question if this run was possible if I would need to scrap the video or change the rules in the middle of the run. But then, I got this attempt where I had a chance to get down to the bottom floor. I had to be extra careful though, because if I didn't make it down there a few times in a row, I would lose this like one in a thousand checkpoint. I stay as hidden as I can, and I take down the guys coming down the elevator. It takes a few tries, but I get into that first jail cell and sigh with relief. I leave these guys to fight off all the snipers while I go to the next cell. They're not there when we come back out, but I mean, I'm pretty sure they just went ahead. These two guys actually stick with me though for a while. I keep them both through the next few hallways, and they are extremely useful in this outdoor section. Not only do they kill one or two of them sometimes, but they can go ahead and uh, show me where the enemies are. Even with their scouting missions, I'm able to keep them alive all the way through until the final outdoor section. I door peek my way through the final two rooms. And manage to beat the greatest threat to the possibility of this run. The end is in sight now. Uprising was similar to Delta Halo. I did some skips along the cliff that took longer than you might think, because I had to methodically clear out everything first. Easy level, only took about an hour. Well, well, I spawn on this platform with no cover. Boo-hoo! These guys come out of this door while I'm literally not in control. The fog makes these rooms too dark. I'm scared. This room had too many enemies. That's what the first draft of this level script sounded like. It was hard. I dealt with it. I've been desensitized to dying without warning and knowledge of how I died five minutes into an attempt long ago. I will go into detail a bit on this last room, though. This room has infinitely spawning flood, which means infinitely spawning sniper jackals. It took me a lot of attempts before I even googled if this room was infinite, but once I found out that it was, I had to change my strategy. I had to inch my way forwards when I could, and scare some to keep alive so they wouldn't kill me as fast. After a ton of trial and error, I finally make my way to the end of the platform, and make it to the final level in the game. I mean, I'm basically on my victory lap here. The game treats me to a nice vehicle section. I actually get hunters on my side this time, unlike the Halo 3 run. Then, I have some fun with the Banshee before heading in to kill Tartarus. After the Regret fight, I was dreading this one. With his health doubled, it took me a few minutes of running around to hurt him enough to spawn his next wave. Then, I would go to the upper platform and kill his... 
Does that guy have two shields? Anyway, I grind it out, and after 40 hours of total gameplay and a lot of frustration, I have become the first person to beat Halo 2 on Legendary with every enemy being a sniper jacket. Thanks for watching, guys. I had this idea before the Halo 3 video even released, but thank you to everybody who suggested this idea and other things on that video. Also, thanks in general to everybody who watched that last video. I wasn't expecting anyone but like a few modded Halo diehards to see it, but I mean I got lucky I guess. My next video is obviously going to be a Halo 1 challenge. I hope you guys stick around for that, and my inevitable Halo Reach mod too once they release the mod tools for that. Tell me what wild stuff I should mod in in the comments to make it harder. The download for this mod is in the description along with a special extra hard version of the mod if this wasn't bad enough for you. Anyway, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff. Thanks everyone again for the reception to my last video, and I hope you have a good day.